the name doesn't lie. This is DB9. This is the iconic Palmer Johnson 170, fully refitted. It's an absolute icon. That gold, sporty exterior, well, that's about 32 knots, powered by twin 16 valve MTU engines. But once you're on board, it's a very different feel on board. This boat is full of surprises and is hugely impressive. It's up for sale for around $22 million with Worth Avenue yachts, and we have Worth Avenues. Kevin Routh to show us around today. He knows the boat inside out. It's going to be a great tour. I hope you enjoy it. I'm Carl Richardson and you're watching Yacht Buyer. Kevin, thanks for you? showing us around very well, sir. Not a problem. Welcome thanks. to DB9. It's a pleasure to be here. And you were saying that it made a lot of sense to start the tour here on the aft deck yeah, for all sorts of absolutely. reasons. Absolutely. So, the main living area, quite frankly, that most people gravitate to, starting with the jacuzzi aft, which is a freshwater jacuzzi, right. and it has an infinity edge, which is really sexy on the dock, which is back like at night. Nice. But this has a drop pool as well, so when you're underway, so you don't have the water sloshing all over the place, you drop the water down, there's a teak cover that goes over the top, get your anchorage, bring the water back up, you're really ready to go. It. Very good. So Impressive. obviously sun lounge is here. Huge sun lounge. There. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, convertible space here. So you can have this as dining. These drop down also as coffee table height. Right. Uh, so you can get a group of 20 people out here for, uh, for a meal, which is spectacular. Yeah. And these power in and out as well. So these, these benches actually move in. They move in. Right. Under power, there's some buttons over there, so wouldn't Very want good. anyone to sprain any wrists. No, you know? absolutely not. Touch of a button. And also you can see actually, can't you, the way that so the tables fold away really neatly, exactly. don't they all completely open yeah. up? Yeah. And of course the power sunshade uh, for when you don't want all the sun back here. Absolutely. This is the first of the 170 Palmer Johnsons, uh, the range that started at 120 feet. They yep. did 135, 150, and then this was hull number one of three of the 52 meter series. There's something unique, isn't there, about the build of this particular Palmer Johnson? Yeah, indeed. Uh, interestingly enough, for an American company, yeah. uh, these boats were very well known for being built on the lakes in Wisconsin. Right. Uh, but this boat was built in Southampton, England. So there are two more of these were built. Yes. But they were built in the States, and they're different as well, aren't they? They are different. So they have a semi-enclosed top deck. Yeah. This has an open sun deck. Flybridge, yeah, and also this one is the only one that has the infinity jacuzzi pool on the aft transom area with the drop tank. So this really is a unique boat. It's a one-off. So we're standing here in this very social area, and you were saying earlier on about this being the main dining area that you see, but it's got some interesting features all by itself, hasn't it, out here? Yes, the current owner is the only the second owner of the boat. Uh, he's owned larger boats, but loves the indoor-outdoor ambience, and it's his favorite area, you know, to dine and, and socialize, quite frankly. Yeah. You can dine 20 people out here between the table setups. Definitely. But to make it comfortable year-round, he actually added 25 tons of sacrificial air conditioning <laughs> into this space which were through these vents here right. and over there. Right. You can close off the side decks uh, with doors that are molded in and there's enough air conditioning to make it extremely comfortable here. Yeah, it's incredible. So outdoor air conditioning, that's very, very super yacht. Brilliant. Well, I think what we should do now is go inside and check out the interior on uh, DB9. Let's do it. So here you go. Yeah. A little bit of air conditioning in the uh, Florida heat. Yeah, and this I was not expecting at all. The contrast between the, that exterior design and the interior design is... It, it is, everyone is very surprised. Yeah. It's light and bright, obviously white colors. It's a juxtaposition, I like to call the yin and yang of the design process because she's very masculine and aggressive on the outside, yeah. but so soft and calming, quite yeah. frankly, yeah. on the inside. People are really, really surprised when they I, come into the salon. I think you're absolutely spot on. And there's also that sense of space, because you've got those gallery windows running down each side. Yes, absolutely. And it, the, the width, and you were saying, I mean, she's about 30 31 foot, foot beam overall, and yes. You feel it, it really yeah. feels, plus, yeah. of course, the massive overhead. Yeah. You know, which which adds to the volume, and yet she's still under 490, you know, she's 495 GT, she's under 500 GT. Well, you mentioned the headroom. 
Right. And I think we should take ourselves forward. Well, this, this is rather special. Yeah. So the current owner, because he put the air conditioning outside, yeah. there used to be a formal dining area forward here. Right. So he put a small dining area in, but then added this rather superlative bar area. Yeah. Um, so backlit. Beautiful. But what is really dramatic is the one and a half stories of headroom yeah. in here, which for a sport boat, yeah. and you look at the exterior profile, is totally unexpected. It is a huge um, surprise. It, and, it is. And I love the way that, that, that they continue that glass up there. You, you know, the, the eye is allowed, isn't it, to go all the way up. It really does feel double height. Ab absolutely. And uh, another big surprise here on this bar, quite frankly, is, is behind the big mirror right. uh, is an 82-inch TV. <laughs> Just the 82-inch? Uh, just 82, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, which, which shines through. So you want your uh, you know, Sunday afternoon match. Uh, you, you have it while you're sipping your champagne. It's a great spot. And I'm guessing that this bar area is going to see a lot more use than a dining table. Absolutely. Well, it would for me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let's go down below. Look at the accommodation. Let's do that. So here you have four guest staterooms, uh, suites with en suites and two VIP queen cabins. Yeah. Uh, again, great over overhead height. Mm -hmm. uh, very light, big portholes mm -hmm. ahead of its time once again in the design. Yeah. Um, ladies' makeup area and fantastic ensuite heads, uh, really large, uh, again, for the style and size of the boat. Wow. You could have a party in here, yeah, quite, frankly. Yeah, I was not expecting that. They're huge. No, they are. And big walk in showers. Beautiful stonework, of course, that Palmer Johnson were known for. So this is like having two two VIPs, basically. Yes. So uh, the mirror image, exactly this one, and the one on the uh, starboard, starboard side, side is exactly the same. So moving forward here, we have the two twin cabins. Uh, right. Mirror image again. Yep. Each of which also have a Pullman berth. So coming down, so if you've got kids or nanny and kids and everything else, this is fantastic. So you can sleep six in these two cabins. Yeah. And then of course the two VIPs and both have the en suites with the stall shower. And again, you've got loads of floor space here. The thing I'm getting, I mean, across the boat, across the interior is the proportion work is excellent. It's very Expecting. surprising. It yes. is really impressive, but I feel like we're missing a cabin here. You are, but we're saving the best for last. So follow me to the master cabin. Very good. So the nice thing is the master has its own private entrance, which is tucked away on one side. Yeah which you don't really notice when you first come in the I boat. I didn't notice it at all when we no. came in. So down this way, private entrance, master only. There's a uh, fridge here, dedicated fridge for the master, and the full beam master suite. So you really are feeling that beam here now, aren't yep. you? Yeah, again, that 31 foot beam, this is full beam with the big windows. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are used to having an on-deck owner's suite yep. on a boat this size. Yep. But frankly, this is a better place to be in the boat because it's more stable mm -hmm. and you've got all the privacy and there's just as much light given these massive windows. Yeah. Yeah, these are quite something, these windows, quite Bannenberg like, but obviously we know boat was designed by Nuvari Len Leonard, Leonard but yes. Yeah, it does feel, you feel like you're on something that's been designed, aren't you? And quite frankly, this built was delivered in 2010, yeah. but the design is still relevant today. I mean, it still turns heads. Yeah. It is still an iconic design and, as I say, very relevant. Yeah. Full beam, uh, nearly full beam, not quite actually, but uh, massive owner's head, mm -hmm. bathroom. Unusual for a sport boat to have a tub, <laughs> again, with your big windows. Yeah. And full big walk-in shower. And of course, your WC and the his and her sinks. Again, it's just that scale, that proportion, isn't it? It is. Incredible. Yes. I mean, the amount of floor space, the headroom, it completely belies that exterior profile. Indeed. Just keeps impressing. So tell me a bit more about the finish in this cabin. Well, there's, there's a lot of detail. As yeah. you start to look closely, obviously, you've got a desk over here. Uh, not a bad place to do some work, catch up on a few emails. Yeah. But uh, you got Stingray uh, paneling around on the walls. Right. And then, of course, these beautiful side tables. Uh, one is a uh, clock and the other one is a compass on the other side. And a uh, beautiful fitted wardrobe uh, in here, walk-in uh, walk closet. Right. 
Now this is a magnificent stateroom. It truly is, yes. So we've seen the interior now and we're going to head up on deck, but are we done with the surprises? Have you got more? No, I think we have another pretty big surprise for you up on deck. Follow me. So here you have an eight meter saltwater swimming pool. <laughs> Incredible. You, you don't get this on 60 meter displacement. No. Ones. No, to find this, as you say, on a on a 170 foot sports yacht, right, is quite something. It really is. It really is the cherry on top. It is. This was your surprise. Yes, indeed. So there's a few more surprises up here too. So this doubles as a tender garage. Right. So she carries a 21 foot rib. So when this is empty, yeah, they put chocks in here, and the rib goes in the pool, and we are standing on a garage for a three-person Sea-Doo. And over there is another garage for another jet ski. Three-person, so the big three-person's under there. I can see the outline yep. now for the hatch, yeah. Yep, you've got a centerline davit here, which can pick your toys up and put them on either side, port or starboard. Right. And then your anchor lockers, all hidden away. So this is a great entertaining space when it's not a working space. And here you have it. I mean, I don't think, it, it, it's important to state, isn't it? You just don't get pools this big on any yachts, really. Very few yachts you, have got You've a pool. got to go very large, typically, to yeah. have a pool this big. Yeah. So to find it on this sports shot, that is quite special. And the other great thing is you can fill this up in 15 to 20 minutes. Right. So it's not a big job. No. And you're saying, sorry, you did say earlier, it's, a, it, it's salt water. It's salt water. Uh, for the show, we filled it up full of uh, fresh water because right. we didn't want to put the intracoastal water in it. <laughs> but normally, when you're in the Bahamas or the Caribbean, yeah. absolutely salt water. Look at this for a spot. You know, you've got that, that superstructure there. You've got that incredible, yep. like, you know, the sort of the mounts, the radar arch, and, you know, the mounts for all your sat nav and everything. This is a hell of a spot here, isn't it? It's just such an iconic design. It yeah. really is timeless. You feel that here. Yes. You really do. And again, it's just that contrast with the interior we just looked at. We've right. gone from that, you see that refined, that quiet, very peaceful owner's cabin, for instance. And then right. we're up here. And now then, we're back in party mode. Now we're back in party mode. Exactly that. And we've still got one more deck to look at. We absolutely do. Let's go and have a look at the flybridge. So here we are up on the sun deck. Now I've already peeked through the other side of here, but we're not gonna go there straight away because I wanna, I wanna stand here and look, we're standing under this, this fantastic sort of mast area here. Indeed. So this was all reshot at the same time that he did the champagne paint. Yeah. So all of the exterior paint was reshot at the same time back in 2019. Right. And then the cushions and all the furniture, loose furniture were replaced. And of course you got a small gym area as well. The, so the projector you would say sits on there. Yeah. So here there's a screen that fits in here. Right. And there's a projector aft that sits on top of the uh, anchor light back there. Yeah. And so at night time, this is a great yeah. outdoor movie theater. Yeah. Just making use of this really architectural bit of the yacht. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And then we go forward. Right. Under here, you got a uh, barbecue area. And on the other side, fridge and ice maker. Oh, and then, of course, another that. jacuzzi. You can't have too many jacuzzis on board. Need right? another one, so that's the yeah. third That's the pool. third one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Slightly smaller than the other two, a little bit more intimate. Yes, I would say so. But, you know, still the third pool. Indeed. And then on either side, you'll see over here, we got the uh, bridge wings that fold out. Yeah. And this opens up. And if you see, you can actually kneel and you can see almost down the complete side of the boat. Absolutely Very good. fantastic. And it when is. they're not in use, they're hidden away. Very good. Well, Kevin, thank you for that tour. It was My pleasure, absolutely Tom. My full, pleasure. Of, full of surprises. There was things that I just was not expecting, but I also got a real sense of the quality of the boat walking absolutely. around. Absolutely. Well, Palmer Johnson, uh, unfortunately, doesn't appear they're building boats anymore but they were always a good quality builder. And this is a fantastic boat. The current owner has loved it very much, yeah. upgraded it. Now it's time to let her go. 21.9 million, I think there's a little bit of room in there as well. Brilliant, well I wish you all the best with all the right. sale, sir, and thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Cheers, Kevin.
So here we are in the nerve center, the performance nerve center of DB9. We've got these two very handsome helm seats here, which are on sliding pedestals so they can close in around the steering wheel and of course the all important throttle controls. That's what's harnessing these twin MTU 16 valve 4,600 horsepower engines pushing this boat to around 32 knots. But you bring those revs back, 22 knots, she's barely breaking sweat really on this boat. And if you take them back further, we're looking at a 5,000 nautical mile range at about 10 knots and a very healthy sort of 3,000 nautical mile range at a much faster sort of cruising speed, 15, 20 knots. So this is a beast, no doubt, with all that horsepower and those fine pedigree sports looks. But it's also a very usable boat with that transatlantic capability lower down the rev range. As we look around here, we've got this, this, <laughs> this incredible display of uh, technology here in front of these big screens lying behind, or underneath, I should say, these heavily mullioned screens. There's an enormous rake on here. We've got the, uh, the covers on to keep the uh, boat cool, but you can see the visibility is going to be very much forward facing here. You're not going to get a lot else, but there are those wing stations up top. So I see this as being for those longer journeys, going to go meet the owner on charters and what have you. Whereas if there's going to be some fun to be had at 30 knots or even 20 knots for that matter, we've got those great pod wing stations up on the flybridge. But you do feel the power here of this boat. And as I can say, everything really is focused in on this center console. It's, uh, it's quite the place. So we're down here in the engine bay. It's a pretty steep ladder coming in. And although it's a pretty good size engine bay, it's taken up by these beasts. If you ever want to know what a 16 valve 4,613 horsepower MTU looks like, this is what it looks like. This is a beast. We've also got triple 80 kilowatt generators down here. She's running gyroscopic zero speed stabilizers, but we're really now in the, in the heart of the boat. There's space to move all the way around. It is quite a tight bay. Like I say, that's mainly because of just the, the hardware that's packed in here. But yeah, again, you get that sense of the power at play on DB9. So that was me, Carl Richardson. You've been watching Yacht Buyer. Thank you very much for joining us today. If you'd like to see more of what we're doing, do click over here. And if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you click here. Thanks again.